SOP backpackers. So this is just going to be a bit of an overview. If you want any more detail, click on the link below. Uh, we've got a full kit list. Uh, but this is going to be more like a summary of the most important things you need to be taking on your epic Everest base camp track. Yeah! So starting off with the most important thing, your boots. These bad boys. <coughs> you need to make sure you get oh, a pretty good pair. Because these are actually my second pair. Um, my first during a training trip to Snowdon in Wales actually turned out this like cracking. So definitely get some practice runs in with the boots just to kind of break them in. You'll need trainers as well. Just because when you're chilling in the tea houses, you don't want to be wearing your boots. They're going to be hot, they be sticky. You want something a bit more light, a bit more free. Backpack. Standard. Just a standard kind of... To be honest, your porters will be carrying this. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, but just make sure it's packable. Uh, this is going to be the second most important thing. This is your day pack. Like, it's pretty good if you can get one with an airspace air current so that when you sit on your back you can actually get oxygen going through clever isn't it kind of optimal size about 20 about 25 to, to plus five if possible you're going to need quite a lot of space basically you'll be carrying your water any like your down jackets your waterproof everything you might need during the day the temperature will fluctuate quite a lot so you need to be able to be prepared for basically all seasons so down jacket now this this one's pretty good so as you can see it's all squashed in to a bag uh, and you can see these are these are size eventually eventually hopefully it's not a bloody snowstorm coming in So, starting to look a bit more like the Michelin Man. It's quite warm. Terrible hood though, terrible hood. Got taken the piss out of far too much when I was on the trip. But yeah, so that's what you basically, that's what you should be looking for. It needs to be a thick, very, very warm down jacket that can be squashed down. The thing with all of your kit, it's gotta be space confined. Like, you're not gonna have a lot of room, both in your day pack and your backpack. The port is going to be carrying it, everything's weight restricted. You're tracking for so many hours, you just need everything needs to be as compact as you can get. It. Nothing oh, that you think you might not need or too big. Everything's got to be efficient. Leave that there. That's fine. I think of it that later. Waterproof, just because some days it's going to be warm but wet, obviously. Uh, these kind of kits are really important as well, so sunnies. Uh, head torch and torch, normal torch as well. Um, sunnies, sunnies are actually quite important. You get a lot of reflection off the snow, um, and even if it's just just generally quite sunny, yeah, it's bright. <laughs> Trekking trousers. Make sure you invest in a, one, at least two decent pairs when you're going up. Everything's gonna get dirty, but um, yeah, at least invest in a couple of decent pairs of trekking trousers. They have to be waterproof as well. Have to have to be waterproof. <laughs> then merino wool socks. The benefit of merino wool is that it doesn't, they don't hold the moisture in. So when you're tracking for hours and hours and hours in a day, you just, your feet aren't going to get as sweaty and as hot and they won't <clears throat> smell quite so bad. Because um, that's the other thing as well, when you're up in the altitude, there's not really that much running water, surprising, so it's quite difficult to keep all your stuff clean. You might be able to give it a bit of a rinse, but it won't dry up properly. Um, and that's the other benefit, so when you wash merino wool, when it gets wet, it, stay, it dries up really, really quick. Just perfect. T-shirts. Well, again, a bit obvious. Uh, this one is more personal preference. I prefer to train and do exercise in cotton t-shirts. Some people prefer nylon, synthetics, whatever. Whatever you're most comfortable in, because you'll be trekking for like six to eight hours a day. So you've got to wear what you find comfortable. Belt. Now that's important because these will be put onto a certain size when you're going, but you'll probably lose weight like I did. And then these will become too small. Or too big even. These would become too big and you just Yeah, as you're shedding weight as you're climbing. So fleece as well. This is key. 
because it gets bloody cold. When we were there, it was getting to about minus 20 each night. So you kind of want to make sure that you've got something warm to keep you going. And then, it back. Yeah, it's obvious. Um, with a sleeping bag, actually, you don't need to take one. I actually hired one when I was there. I hired one from Namche Bazaar um, for about 20 euros. Easily, easy, it really warm, and saved me carrying it all the way up from Lukla. So it saved me a couple of days worth of kit when I didn't need it. In the tea houses, you'd be given blankets, um, you might even be given extra ones if you can, but generally speaking, you're warm enough up to Namche Bazaar, and then afterwards, you probably might need a sleeping bag. Depends again, personal preference. Depends on what you're most comfortable with in it. But I think as well, track it, a decent pair of trackies because. Sometimes during the day you might actually want to wear trackies as you're trekking if it's dry. When we went, it barely it didn't even rain, so like you just we were in shorts actually to be honest most of the way up. Um, but you want trackies just for when you're chilling in the tea houses, just because you've um, yeah you, you're not going to want to wear your tracking trousers all the time because they're hot. And you want to relax. And yeah, that's about the main kit that you're going to be taking. The kind of extra items. Plasters, 100%, 100%. Just, you should have already broken your boots, but you'll be walking so bloody long, you're gonna need them. Antiseptic, to clean your cuts and bruises and stuff. You don't want to give again an infection up there. Sunscreen, decent sunscreen as well. A pasty white boy, you need decent stuff. Uh, lip balm, ibuprofen, ibuprofen's good for the altitude sickness. And then also, these are just my leftover water purification tablets. Yeah, that is the main things you're going to need. Everything else is kind of auxiliary. Um, to be honest, you can buy pretty much all of this on your way up, uh, especially in Namche Pasar. You, uh, you can get anything you need, anything you might have forgotten or you might have broken. Um, but yeah, as soon as you've got this full kit list, you should be AO prepared. Yes. So yeah, if you uh, but if you want any other tips or if you've got any questions, feel free to give me a shout. Either tweet me or drop me a message here or uh, just check out my other videos if you want any more help. Safe travels.